want me to do your hair right? Yes. Then you need to sit down and you need to be still. When do you think the baby will come? Uh, uh, when it's tomorrow, and when it's the next tomorrow, I think the baby's gonna come. The day after tomorrow. And school starts in what? One, two, three, four days. So I might as well do these kids' hair before this baby come. Even though I feel like if I do it right now, it's gonna look a hot, frizzy mess before school starts. Now I was planning on having a baby two weeks ago. So I could, by the time that school started, I would be up and able to do their hair. Maybe I can get her hair done by tonight, have the baby tonight, and then boom, bam, thank you, ma'am, I'll be finished everything. How does that sound? What? of any baby so we came to the beach to get some rest before the storm you see that that's the storm why aren't you getting in the water why aren't you getting in the water All right, so today is the very last midwife appointment for Elena. We are expecting the baby, I mean, any time now. I don't know, I feel like I need to be at home. I don't wanna go anywhere. I just wanna like clean and get the kids out of my face and just organize stuff, get waters and drinks for Elena. That's what I feel like doing. Elena, um, she's she's been having some sleep troubles. I just uh, hope that she's just, you know, well rested these days. I want her to be feeling right, you know? There's still a lot of tasks to do, but I don't know, I think I just have to just do more, stay up later, and um, that's just how I'm feeling these days. You can just start later, then why don't you just do it today? If you like, want the baby to have a certain birthday, you know, just suck it in until a certain date. You basically can't be <laughs> Yesterday I went swimming. It did work somewhat. Last night I had contractions that woke me up. Okay, you yeah. haven't had that yet? Right, that was okay, the first time. Okay, that's exciting. All right. So I went swimming, I did some little things that I thought would be helpful. Today I am 41 weeks. That's right, I am overdue. Not 40 weeks, but 41 weeks. I came to my sister's complex where she lives to get in the pool to try to relax. Some of those uterine, pelvic floor muscles. Lift my legs up and I put them down. In California, a midwife cannot attend a home birth past 42 weeks. The last time I gave birth, I was actually 43 weeks pregnant. So I am going to do stuff for the next day or two to try to get this baby a coming. <laughs> I can barely kick my feet. I can't do this stuff outside of the water. You know, like fold your knee on top of your leg. One and two, three and four. Going in circles makes it fun. Open up that pelvic floor. I think my water just broke inside of the water. <laughs> down, baby, down. Up and up. And come and down and up and around. And come and down. We'll just get a good stretch. It feels like it's opening up. Yeah, I can feel it, Joe. We might have this big today. I felt something a little bit warm down there. What if I went into birth right now and we couldn't go anywhere and I had to have it in the pool? I wouldn't know if my water broke because I'm in the water. Elena, I have no idea. How would I know? I don't know. Come smell it. 
can it's chlorinated. I always wanted to sing a song together. I know a lot of songs of how they go. Garden. Reason, like the lyrics don't really come to mind. What song? I'll help you out. I can't even remember the words. God of I told you I don't remember the words. God of my hand. Like I just know how I just know how they go, like the syllables. Alright, well let's see. Oh oh, you know that one. I know how it goes. Okay, let's sing it together. I wonder what how our voice recorded when we look back and we're 70 years old. We're like, oh my gosh, that was so cute when we were singing when we were 30. Come on. Yeah, we're not 30, we're 30. 30. 30. Six and a half. 30 ish. 30. Let's practice. It goes, oh, oh. Uh, oh. No, you can forget it by saying that. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, ready? Set, go. Oh 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 Or should you say an O and I say an O? I will sing the first part. You sing the second part. Okay. Each O we say separately. I can't do that. Oh 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 oh. You messed up. Oh 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 oh. That's the first song I want you to pray play when I have my first contraction. So how can you know when you're having your first actual, like, perfectly? You don't know. You don't know until they're, you have them over and over again. Uh, until it like... Yeah. I won't know until it's consistent. Because I have them all the time. I'm having one right now. Are you? Yeah. Oh, oh. So can you uh, tell me what's happening right now? Yes, we're loosening all the fascia and ligaments that help support the uterus, giving baby space to tuck their head and move down. It's all body balancing. It's like body prep. What's a membrane sleep again? I was trying to explain to him last night, but I wasn't yeah. sure. I was like, I think it's when they okay, so attach it's, the... Well, so it's like, it's like, it's like looking for the piece of saran wrap in a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> like it's gonna be, it's like really mushy. Um, but you're looking for like a little opening and then just put your finger in there and like go around Wait, both no, directions, yeah. you know, around and around. Have you, have you ever eaten of those cuties where they easily separate from the skin? Yeah. So it's like you're like put in your finger okay. along there and trying to like separate, like scoop it out. Right. Okay. So it's kind of like trying to get the fibers off of the skin yeah. and the, yeah. that's what it feels like too? Usually slipperier. The opening will usually feel kind of tight. So like you'll know when you're in there and then it's just like going around one way and around the other way a couple times. And if it's open enough, you'll kind of feel the baby's head too. Like I should be able to. Okay, so pretend this is like your cervix. We will go in and separate the membrane. So like the amniotic sac from your cervix. Okay. And that can help to soften your cervix and it releases prostaglandins. So you want to do it? Side effects are, yeah, you can totally try. The first one is <laughs> This is what mommy, just baby's gonna look like. Yes! <laughs> so how large is the opening? We don't know. It depends on how dilated she is or how okay. open it is. You may be able to get in like one or even two fingers and go around. Like for me, two fingers is about three centimeters. One. It's different for each person. It's, it's different for either person. Do I need to make sure my fingernails are cut? Yes, it's right here. Or is it better? Ew, I don't want your dirty fingers inside Wait, my baby, big clean vagina. Your Do your cartwheel, baby. Wow. Good 
have some space here now, a little bit. Yeah. Breathing better? Yeah, Baby's definitely. lower, yeah. yeah. Not the baby, newborn baby. The newborn baby, yes. Yeah. Yes, this will be your newborn baby. <laughs> Baby's still on the left and in a great position. What's that noise? It's her. What do you think? Heartbeat, yeah. Good. Sound like it. That's what they're moving. Sounds yeah. <laughs> like a pen. Except like bubbles. I guess. Sounds like a squishy toy for dogs. Your stomach should be like right. Normally your you're last. like this. Oh, maybe this will be your last. You know where your stomach should be? Huh? Your stomach should normally be. <laughs> No, don't leave your stomach alone. Leave it alone. That's not what your stomach be looking at. You already sucked it in. Let it out. Let it out. Your stomach should normally be right here. <laughs> yeah, the baby can't fit in your stomach girl. Okay, so we are getting ready for the birth. We have everything that we need, and I wanted to show you guys exactly what I have for my home birth. So first, Da, 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 the pool. So this is the birthing pool that um, I'm gonna be using if I decide to get want to get in the water during labor or if I want to have the baby in the water. And um, it's a blow up pool. My midwife provided it. The pool is reusable, but you get your own liner, fill it up, and then that liner basically, you know, take that and throw it in the trash. So over here are all the birthing supplies that the midwife will need to do the birth stuff. You need towels. I have two sitting here. You're gonna need a lot more than two, but like you have to have a whole bunch of towels because you're having a birth at your home. They wanna lay down towels if you wanna move for cleanup. These are just liners, you know, disposable liners. Maybe give birth or put it on the floor if there's blood and stuff from, you know, you giving birth. This is a bowl. This is for the put the placenta in after the birth. So they will be able to look at it and check it. You usually have um, hydrogen peroxide. This helps clean up blood off of clothing or, or cloth or the mattresses or something like that. Flashlight, not really sure what the flashlight is for. I guess, I don't know, lights go out, gotta see. This liner here, this is for the bed. So usually you don't, have a hospital bed. You don't have like one of these beds where everything just pulls off and comes back on. So what you're gonna wanna do is make your bed with your sheets first that you want after your birth. So nice clean sheets. And then you put this liner over top of it to line the bed. And then you put like old sheets or sheets you don't care about getting dirty over top of those. So if you want to birth in your bed, you can get those top sheets dirty, but there'll still be a liner underneath so that when you're finished, your midwife, your team, your husband will just grab everything off of the bed, including this liner, and then you'll have clean, nice sheets for after the birth. This is a peri bottle, and what this is for is after birth, you might want to not use toilet paper to cleanse yourself because toilet paper is rough and also it's hard to pee after birth so what this actually I usually use it for at first is you put like warm water in it and you squirt it on like the area in between your labia or your clitoris you know down there but you spray it down there and it helps you to pee when there's water touching that area also it's just a cleansing you can help clean because you might be bleeding afterwards so this you can just put water in and clean that area almost like a bidet like having a bidet next to you these are little ice cube trays so i'm gonna get my placenta frozen so i can make placenta smoothies so these ice cream trays are for when the midwife will mix everything up and then pour them into here and then when i want to make a smoothie i just use a couple of these put into the smoothie with your regular smoothie stuff and blend it all up here we have after birth sits bath. So a sits bath is basically when you sit in a little bit of water so your bottom area can be more, you know, heal better. So I've never used this before, but this is just what my midwife recommended. And I guess they're going to make um, a solution of the sits bath stuff just to sit in it and heal. These are just some electrolytes so you can drink it during birth or after birth. And then I have a little footprint thing for the babies because you don't automatically get it for a home birth so you have to purchase it 
you know, do the little footprint. All right, this is my pad drawer. In my pad drawer, I have tucks. So these are like witch hazel pads, basically. When you go through labor, a lot of times you may get hemorrhoids or you may have um, cuts or tears. And so these can really help relieve any pain from that. And you kind of like put these on over top of a pad. I also have obviously the pins, which is great as well. And these are also the pins, really just helps all that blood flow just stay in here and not get on like your normal underwears and stuff like that. I also have just like a whole bunch of pads for after the birth. And my favorite are mesh undies. These are great again, because you don't want to mess up your normal regular underwear. So if you put a pad in these and blood gets somewhere else, trickles out it's just on this mesh little panty thing it's really thin and you can just wash it hand wash it so i would usually wear these like the pins a few days after birth like using those first and then as the blood flow you know kind of goes down i would wear these mesh panties they give these in the hospital so i had to buy them off of a website with all the other stuff like for home birthers a couple of these came in my birthing kit but i bought even more and these are again are just disposable like liner things that you see in the hospital even with the, the pins and with the mesh underwear it could still like you could still spill out over the bed so i like to put these underneath me while i'm sleeping oh i didn't show you my baby stuff i use cloth diapers if you don't know these are newborn cloth diapers they have an orange stripe and they are pre-folds it's folded like that and then these are like the little wings that come out and then you pin it right there and pin it right there. And I use these things, they're called snappies. It's like a modern version of the diaper pin. And they just hold your diaper like that. Isn't that so cute? That's so cute. And you got the little legs that stick out here. You would then use a cover. I love wool covers for infants because first of all, I really love the smell of them. And second of all, you don't have to wash them every time you use them because they naturally disinfect urine these are like a big one so you put that on and you put this up over them and it comes like all the way up here to their chest so they don't even really need anything but this big old diaper for their clothes and then you could like swaddle them after that they have a smell to them which is produced by the lanolin that naturally occurs on what sheep so those are a couple of kind these are some kind that i bought off of etsy that are homemade and i got them already by lanolizing them mm. you just take a little bit of lanolin which is like a thick oily substance put it in hot water and you lay these in there and then they get nice and soft and then I have these ones that kind of look like a normal diaper cover they just snap on like that these things cost about somewhere between 25 to somewhere like 30 to 40 dollars but you can use them forever. You don't have to go out and rebuy them. I love these and these stay in really good condition. I bought these ones with Ajidai. So three babies ago, this is the fourth baby that I'm using these wool diaper covers on. And then here I just have cloth wipes. And then here I have disposable water wipes that I love. These are obviously not cloth diapers. These are regular infant size diapers from Honest. These, I believe these are the same diapers I bought for Ajidai. So these are being used for the fourth time. Down here is just the rest of my overflow diapers. They go by size. So the yellow ones are for a little bit of a bigger infant. And then these red ones are like once you're past one years old. But right now, these red ones, I'm going to use as like burp cloths. Here I just have all my muslin wraps that I used to swallow the baby with. These I've had since Ajui. It's kind of neutral, but it's not. But I don't think it really matters if you have a pink swaddle for a boy. I mean, I'm just using it. Very little clothes, but these are all the clothes that I'll be using for the baby. That's it. Easy peasy, I have enough. I don't think I need as many outfits. When I first had a child, I didn't understand like, oh, you're gonna throw up or you might pee on me. And so I use more clothes. But now as I have more children, I can more predict, oh, they're going to throw up or oh, they might pee. That's it, I'm all ready for my birth. <laughs>